Proverbs 11 is filled with a lot of practical wisdom and it starts off with, you know, being dishonest and being a fraud. If you have some sort of business or if you're selling something to someone, whatever it is, be honest, you know, don't lie about it. Verses three through eight is talking about the righteous versus wicked, which we've spoken about, you know, prior. And verse nine, really interesting. The hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge, the righteousness will be delivered. And it says the hypocrite. So if you are talking about someone in a, in a bad way, at the end of the day, you're still talking about them <laughs> and you're not doing anything better than, you know, whatever you're saying about that person. I hope I explained that okay. But one of the things that, you know, not only does this chapter talk about adultery several times and um, how that is related to wisdom, but it also talks about the tongue and we can say things that are often hurtful and damaging. And so um, just be really careful of what you say. Verses 10 through 11 is talking about, again, righteousness versus wickedness. So I think that's related to verses three through eight. Verses 12 through 13 is talking about the mouth again. And if you are devoid of wisdom, you despise your neighbor. So it's interesting because when you have wisdom, I don't think it's saying that, um, if you are devoid of wisdom, then I guess what I'm trying to say is someone who is wise, someone who is wise can keep peace with someone a lot more easily than someone who is not wise. If you have someone that's challenging in your life and they're not, and they're constantly bringing about, you know, bringing you to a place where you're not um, in peace, that is something that you need to look at for yourself. You can't blame that person. You need to think about that on your own and how you react to that person. Also, someone who has wisdom is not going to create uh, situations that don't foster peace. So I think it goes hand in hand. And I wrote, wisdom breeds peace because it's true. When I was dumb and younger, <laughs> I would say things. I wouldn't even think, I wouldn't care. I would just say what was on my mind. And now that I'm a little bit older, more wise there's so much value in just not saying anything you know just let that person think what they want yes maybe they said something to kind of get under your skin a little bit but that's okay you can just let it go and move on same thing with 13 you know if someone says okay can i tell you something but i don't want you to tell anyone else i hold that to the utmost importance I don't care if it's my spouse. I don't tell a soul. So it's really important to have that level of trust with someone. Um, I feel like if someone trusts you enough to tell you something where they don't want you to tell anybody else, the least you can do is keep it to yourself. Don't share it with your anybody. You know, if they don't want you to tell anybody, keep it to yourself. Um, Verse 14 makes me think of a community of believers too. I mean, of course, I think the word is also talking about just um, counsel in general. You, can, you know, God is our counselor, it says, um, and just different, even if you think of government, you know, we have some we have laws, we have things to keep, guide people and keep us safe. However, I also think of a multitude of counselors, right? The people that we are around in church, and that's why church is so important to have that community, that multitude of counselors. You know, there's a saying that says it takes a village to raise a child. And that's kind of what I think of, you know, not necessarily only with raising a child, but just with living life, going through life with a multitude of people, of believers. Fellowship as a believer um, is really important. Proverbs 15, I did not understand at all. I had to look that up in the Enduring Word commentary. And it says, um, the promise to pay the debts of a stranger is to invite trouble. And then one who hates being a surety uh, just means there is security in being responsible for one's own debts for the things that they have control over. So I think we talked about this before, but never take on the debt of someone else. Um, sometimes, you know, you can have a big heart and you want to help someone and that's great, but it's wise to not involve money. When you involve money, especially when it comes to like 
friends or family and taking over some sort of debt or something, it can be really tricky to navigate. And so the Bible even warns us against that. Sixteen through twenty-three talk about the righteous versus the wicked again, but it paints a picture for us um, in several ways. So, for example, as a ring of a gold in swine's snout, so is a lovely woman who lacks discretion. So, if you think about a ring of gold on a, a pig, like a pig's nose, basically, um, that doesn't go right; it doesn't fit, um, and it, that's what it's saying. You know, so is a lovely woman who lacks discretion. So the lovely woman would be kind of like the golden ring. And if a, a woman lacks um, discretion, then it can, it doesn't fit, right? It's the same thing. It's an analogy here, a picture that the word is painting. Discretion is really important. Um, and it, it can dictate, you know, how we act, how we behave around others. It could be part of your judgment. So. One thing to think about is how do you carry yourself as a person? Is it ethical? Does it line up with the word of God? 24 through 26 talks about money. And we, I just did a Bible study on tithing right before the new year ended. And as I'm filming this video, that video on tithing just went up yesterday, <laughs> but Money is, you know, the kingdom of God it doesn't make sense to a lot of people. Why would I earn money and then give 10% of it back to God or more and then give more, you know, to others? And that makes no sense, right? But it's biblical. The Bible says that the more we give, the more that we will receive, whether that is in material things or, you know, blessings that are not tangible, that are in, you know, worth so much. And so this is saying the same thing. The person who gives and who um, gives back to others will actually receive more than the one who does not. Sometimes I am in a bad mood and I'm sure you can agree. Sometimes you're there too. And I'm just having a, a bad day. I don't know, I'm just in a bad mood. But if I just stop for a second and do something nice for someone, it doesn't matter what it is. If I give someone a compliment, if I, I don't know, anything, give them, you know, buy them a coffee, it doesn't matter. That usually helps my mood, that blesses me. And so, you know, giving something, doing something to someone, for someone, can only help us in turn. Verse 27 is talking about good versus evil, and you could probably think, well, I'm not evil. Um, and you're not, you know, I'm not calling you evil, but sometimes we make choices that can foster, or let me word it like this, sometimes we can make choices that can inhibit peace. So. If it's not peaceful, then there, you know it's probably evil. <laughs> it's not good. It's not something that God wants. So, for example, just like you know what we've been talking about with the tongue, if you say something to someone knowing that you have ulterior motives in the back of your mind, yeah, I'm saying this to this person because I really want them to think this, this, and this, or I'm really trying to take a jab at how they do this. That's not you know that's that's having an evil mindset. What is, what peace is that going to bring about? What good is that going to bring about? And this is, it's talking about that here, him who seeks evil, uh, trouble will come to him. Verse 28, if you trust in money, you will fall. And this is not, you know, the first time that the Bible mentions trusting in money. Trusting in money is baseless. You know, it, it won't get you far. There's so many people who have money and material things and they're not happy. So money isn't everything. Verse 29, who, he who troubles his own house. Again, that makes me think of what we're talking about with adultery. Of course, you can trouble your own house in many different ways like we've talked about here, but that's just kind of what it makes me think of. And if you bring trouble into your own house, it can um, you know, be very difficult. It can be difficult. And having peace at home, I feel like, is vital. It's vital to have your home be your safe place where you can clear your mind. And so it's important to maintain peace at home. Verse 30 makes me think of John chapter one verse, oh, what verse is it? I can't remember, I'll put it on the screen, but John chapter one, there's a verse that says, um, you know, the light is within us and that light, you know what, let me just look it up one moment. 
John chapter 1 verse 7, he came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. And the he is John that, you know, John wrote the book of John and he's, re he's re referring to himself. He's saying that we are a witness that we testify concerning the light. We are not the light, but we came to only as a witness to the light so that through us, people may believe. God uses us for people to believe. And that's our ultimate purpose here. And, you know, I've said this before, but we're often looking for God. What am I here for? What am I here for? God has already told us. We are here to help bring others to God. And verse 31 just confirms that, you know, if the righteousness will be re recompensed on earth, how much more the ungodly and the sinner. And I like the first part, you know, the righteousness will be recompensed on earth, which means, you know, we will see um, a reward for something while we're still here, while we're still on earth. Yes, we will have that heavenly reward, but we will also have a reward while we're still on earth of that blessing. Alrighty, so that is it for today. Please let me know what you learned. This was a little bit longer than I expected, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. Um, so for the entire month of January 2021, I'll be posting every single day at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but normally I post Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I hope you subscribe. I will talk to you next time. Bye.